What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Grid, my name is Gridden. Today you guys, we are going to be taking care of the Takodana Sith Galactic Challenge, and this is where you need to use resistance to knock out some Sith. And I, I, I was raging, I was raging hardcore during this testing. Uh, I was like, no, this is impossible, there's no way I'm going to be getting through this without Galactic Legend Potato Ray. And well, what do you know? I cracked it. So let's go ahead and jump into the Galactic Challenge, you guys. I'm going to show you how you can beat this with a Gear 12 JTR, a Gear 12 BB-8, a Gear 12 Resistance Trooper, and then a Relic R2-D2 and a Relic 3P 3PO, which... So you guys, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this one. I'm going to show you guys how to knock out this Galactic Challenge with a Gear 12 JTR, a Gear 12... BB-8, a Gear 12 Resistance Trooper with a Relic R2-D2 and a Relic 3PO who are only Relic because I'm going for JML. They don't need to be Relic as well, you guys. So you could probably knock this out at full Gear 12. So let's jump right into this. All right, guys, so for this GC here, Modifiers. Global modifiers is a safe haven. So the first unit to deal damage to an enemy while nobody has death mark is inflict with death mark until they're the end of the battle or until they're defeated. Okay. Uh, this can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. Um, this actually isn't going to play a huge part. Um, we're we're gonna just 110% control this match. Okay, so this actually doesn't come into a uh, huge effect here your player modifier fearless fortitude whenever an enemy resisted detrimental effect from a resistance ally that ally will gain a heal over time for one turn however also when they gain a buff they will additionally gain five percent potency crit chance crit damage until the end of the battle and ten percent turn meter this will come into play this one is huge for us so this is great uh enemy modifier Whenever a Sith ally is defeated, all Sith allies will gain 50% max health and offense, stacking until the end of the battle, but they will also gain 50% turn meter and recover 50% health. Okay, so we do have to keep an eye out for this one, especially that turn meter gain, okay? So we do need to pay some special attention to this. However, as well, whenever a Sith ally defeats an enemy, they gain Dark Ascension, which can't be copied, dispelled, or prevented. The damage that they receive is decreased by 15 the damage they deal is increased by 30. this should not come into play you shouldn't lose anybody okay feats this week complete the battle complete the battle with a full team of resistance units complete the battle with an undersized squad and win after removing 400 percent turn meter from the enemies we're gonna knock these two out in the same battle okay full team of resistance units and remove 400 percent turn meter after that we will use a separate team uh, to knock this out with an undersized squad okay so i'm going to show you guys actually i'm I'm going to break down and go through one team composition okay um and then i'm going to show you a second team composition that is very similar just slightly different depending on what you got for your roster um and then we'll go into the undersized squad so you guys here is the team composition question we got ourselves a gear 12 jtr double zeta okay and you don't even need two Zetas, you really only need the leadership Zeta, a gear 12 BB-8, a relic um, R2-D2, a relic 3PO, and a gear 12 resistance trooper. Dude's making a comeback. All right, so let's go into uh, these mods here real quick, you guys, and then uh, and then we'll jump into the battle. So let's start with JTR here. Um, now with JTR, like I said, I have the two Zetas on her. You don't need both of them uh, or all three of them. You just need the one on the leadership. As long as you got the leadership, you're fine. This match is gonna be all about turn meter gain and turn meter control. It's a give and take here. So there's a couple of things I wanna point out with JTR um, that, that makes this composition, that makes this strategy work. Um, now, the reason that you need the leadership Zeta is because whenever a resistance ally uses a special ability, all exposed enemies will lose 5% turn meter, okay? So exposes equals turn meter removal. Um, resistance allies have plus 30% crit chance and uh, crit damage, that's cool, but when they score a critical hit, they have a 70% chance to inflict expose for two turns. So, when an enemy becomes exposed, resistance allies gain 10% turn meter. So, you gain 10% turn meter, and then if you use a special ability, it removes 5% turn meter from the enemy. So basically what happens 
um, is you make this rift of turn meter that allows you to control the whole match. So this all stems from JTR's leadership. Now, one of the other important things that JTR is doing here is uh, her ability Mind Trick. Uh, dispel all buffs on the target enemy, inflict, very importantly, ability block in days. Often sounds be down or cool, but ability block in days are the are the more important ones. Now, for each debuff inflicted, you'll remove 10% turn meter, and for each debuff resisted, you'll remove 20% turn meter. So either way, it goes in your favor. And after using this ability, JTR will pretty much have 100% turn meter. So I give her a little bit of speed and a little bit of potency. So 241 speed, not that fast. 75% uh, potency, not that high. It's high enough in my personal opinion that like I have a good odd of inflicting those debuffs because I want to inflict those debuffs, but not like crazy high so that if it gets resisted, I actually gain more turn meter. So either way I win. Um, now I was playing around with this with having my JTR the fastest and actually worked better for me having her slightly slower. Uh, so the turn meter is gonna go 3PO, BB-8, R2, JTR, resistance trooper. Okay, so just bear that in mind as we're going along here. I don't really care what the primary mods are. Um, I did give her a potency cross and a protection triangle, uh, but I don't really care what the mods are. Get her around this sort of ballpark range so that she is coming in um, technically what, what would be fourth um, in the turn order. BB-8, uh, I don't really care what his mods are either. Just make him second fastest. So my BB-8 is at 287 speed. Uh, don't care what his primaries are. Don't really care about anything, any of his stuff. Just make him, just get him in that sort of 280 ballpark range, but uh, he is going second, okay? Now, I do have both Zetas on him. You do not need self-preservation protocol. Roll with a punch is very nice um, because, again, the more attacks, the more chances for expose, which means more chance for turn meter control, okay? So it's nice to have it. Not necessary, though. R2-D2. Uh, mine is chilling at 285 speed. So again, 3PO, BB-8, R2. So R2 is just slower um, than BB-8 here. Uh, 285. Now, both Zetas are on there. Not absolutely needed. Combat analysis is cool because you're going to be dispelling debuffs on yourself, but you really won't be getting that many debuffs. Um, and then the number crunch is nice for those bonus stats, but again, not absolutely necessary. So it's kind of like, eh, you're going to be okay if you don't have it. Now, mine's modded for speed and potency. Again, 285 speed, 100% potency. His potency is very important because his basic has a chance to stun. And you need that stun to land on, um, as you're going to see in the end of the battle, uh, you need to land on Malik. Okay? So that's where that comes from. Um, that's why I give him so much potency. Uh, 3PO again. 3PO is going to be my fastest, 271. Remember, his unique gives him plus 20 speed. So he's actually chilling at 291, which means he's fastest. Uh, mine is bonded for speed and potency. Um, so 112% potency. It's very important to have the potency on him because he needs to inflict that confuse. The more confuse you're inflicting, you're gaining, um, you're going to be inflicting uh, effectively buff immunity um, and a daze. And you need to inflict those um, to control the enemy team thanks to the enemy modifier. Um, so that's why mine's modded for speed and potency specifically. So we got a potency cross on there. And then I don't really care what the other mods are. Just give him the speed that he needs to be fastest. Okay. And then last but not least, you guys, uh, resistance trooper. Now resistance trooper is here to fuel the turn meter train that's rolling. So it's basic 65% chance to expose the enemy for three turns. Special ability, uh, dispel buffs with a 50% chance to inflict speed down. So again, further creating the rift. Uh, between um, between the uh, the turn meter thanks to the speed down, but this is because of his unique where he has 10% potency and gains 55% turn meter when an enemy who is not exposed becomes exposed. So he sits over there just gaining a ton of turn meter. Then you use the basic and then you get more exposes. And then you do specials to hit more um, exposes and blah. It just goes. It just goes and goes and goes and goes. All right. Um, now again, JTR's leadership when you score a crit you have a chance to inflict exposed. So I went all out on crit chance um, on my resistance trooper here. So um, his CC is hitting at 73%. Uh, again, you get 30% from JTR's leadership. So this is over 100% um, CC. Uh, I don't really care about his other stats. I have 218 speed that just happened um, from some of the um, speed secondaries that I had on these mods, but I don't really care what the mods are. I'm just going for that CC. Um, and then he's gaining enough turn meter and he's dealing enough damage on his own. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, so you guys, let's go ahead and jump into this battle and I'm going to show you what this one looks like. All right. So the start of this battle is very important. You're going to use 3PO to call BB-8 to assist on Vader. Generate a ton of exposure there, which is going to launch 
um, resistance troopers uh, turn meter through the roof. As soon as you can, you're going to boost that turn meter uh, over on JTR with BBA and then wave down Darth Revan first. Okay, so that's the order that you're going. Call everybody to assist on Darth Vader, wave down Darth Revan. And then from here, what your job for the rest of the match is, is really going to be bouncing back and forth between people um, to hit exposes to boost your turn meter. I like to keep Darth Vader stunned because if Darth Vader goes, it's just, it's freaking obnoxious. Um, but what you're doing for this whole match is just bouncing from person to person, um, waving down whoever is close to turn meter, um, and then triggering all these exposes and using special abilities to boost your own turn meter. As we can see, Darth Nihilus is over here gaining some turn meter, and I'm stuck on the taunt behind Darth Sion. Uh, Darth Nihilus is gaining the turn meter because of his unique he gains turn meter whenever Darth Sion or Darth Trey are hit. So unfortunately, I kind of get stuck there and I didn't get the double um, the double translation on him. So um, he was gaining turn meter. So I kind of just covered myself with the smoke screen there and then uh, and then left him alone. Um, now, kill order wise, I'm going to get rid of Darth Revan first. Um, after Darth Revan, I'm going to aim for Darth Vader. Uh, but I do believe I end up killing somebody next, actually. Um, and then it doesn't really matter between Nihilus um, or Sion. It, it really doesn't. Um, but Darth Revan first. Now, when you hit Darth Revan, he is going to equalize his health with the healthiest person, which in this case is Malak. So he's going to do his drain life. Kind of obnoxious, but just kind of stick with it. Um, he'll go for another drain life. I wave him down. If he were to use another drain life there, um, it wouldn't have killed BB-8. So you're still going to be okay. Um, but just, you know, be aware. I did get a little bit lucky there, but that's honestly kind of irrelevant. Um, here, though, as we can see, I just killed um, Darth Revan. So now everybody just gained some health. They gained some turn meter and all that good fun stuff. Um, so now what I'm going to be doing is, again, going for those exposes. I end up killing Nihilus there. Um, I go trigger some more exposes over on Scion. And now I'm over um, to Darth Vader. Again, I'm just I'm searching for the exposes. I'm dealing the damage with the exposes. All right. Now, from here on out, as soon as everybody's dead and you're stuck with just Malik, your job is now to actually buy yourself time so that you can wave down and remo remove uh, that 400% turn meter. So, your first goal is get him stunned. All right. So, you're going to use R2D2's basic and try and get him stunned. As soon as he is stunned, the rest of this match is going to be removing turn meter. So, pay attention to his turn meter. All right. Remember, specials remove turn meter. So if he has turn meter, make sure to use a special. Um, so like right there, I'm going to wave him down because he has turn meter. Right here, I'm not going to do that special ability because he had 0% turn meter. So it would effectively be a waste of a special ability. Now, when I can, though, I will be using JTR to call uh, 3PO to assist because 3PO removes turn meter on his basic as well. Uh, so it doubles up as both a special ability from JTR um, as well as a, a turn meter removal from 3PO. Um, so I'm not trying to get as much damage as quick as possible. So I'm not going to be using you know, 3PO to do a mass assist. I'm not going to be calling a BB-8 to assist for multiple attacks. I'm actually trying not to kill him uh, as quick as possible uh, so that it gives me enough time to generate uh, that 400% turn meter removal. Okay, so that is the gist of this. I'm going to speed this up for you guys. I'll catch you in the next battle. Now, for our undersized squad here, you guys, we're going to be using Darth Revan, Darth Malak, Basla, Sean Fallen, and Watt Tambor. So, with Darth Revan here, um, I did some testing. The enemy Darth Vader, Darth Vader at um, the Tier 7 um, appears to be at exactly 330 speed. Um, when I was at 330 speed, it was a coin toss between Revan or Vader going first at 331. I was going first. Um, so it looks like the Vader is at 330 speed. So if you can beat that, great. It's not the end of the world if you can't. 
Um, but try to um, get as close as you can to make sure that that Revan is going to be going, if not first, um, immediately after the enemy Vader. OK, so that's all I'm going for. I went for as fast as I could get him uh, 341 or 345 speed. Great. Again, if you can't do it, that's OK. Just get him as quick as you can. I don't really care what his primary mods are or anything. Uh, Malik here uh, is just going to be modded pretty standard um, speed. Make him nice and thick. Um, so mine's 324, 70,000 health uh, with 140,000 protection. So we got a uh, protection circle cross and triangle speed arrow. Um, so make him nice and zippy, um, but then don't worry quite as much. Um, he doesn't really desperately need the tenacity in this, in all honesty. Um, if he got it on there, great. If yours is just like kind of a standard modded Malik, he's going to do just fine. Um, I just made mine as thick as I could make him. Uh, Basti pretty standard as well, speed and potency. So make her nice and fast, give her some potency to be landing those fears and all that good stuff. Don't care what her primaries are, um, just make her nice and fast. And Watt, it's the exact same thing. Um, I have health uh, primaries on there to make him nice and thick. You don't need it whatsoever, just make him fast. His primary role is to throw out some of those tank decks and then die, so I don't really care what his mods are um, as long as he's fast um, to get those out first. So let's go ahead and jump into this battle. And then I'll catch you on the flip side. All right. So going into this battle, uh, I put the weapons tech actually on a Malak because sometimes this battle ends up being just a Malak versus Malak. And I like him to have um, the uh, that extra um, offense there to ignore Malak's defense. Um, it actually does kind of come into play. Um, now, the kill order in this one is going to be slightly different. Um, I'm actually going to leave Nihilus alive and just kind of over there stunned pretty much the entirety of the battle um actually kind of gunned down on malik first unfortunately i couldn't kill him uh, but if you can get rid of malik first actually it kind of helps you um because when it gets down to just him he is so thick it's actually way more difficult to handle him on a 1v1 situation than other people um unfortunately i wasn't able to i kind of kept getting stuck behind darcyan over here so i ended up just killing darcyan first um the kill order itself isn't super important um I would probably gun down um, Vader first, and then Darth Revan, and then Scion, and then Malak, and then Nihilus. Um, but I I got stuck behind Scion there, so I had to kill Scion first. Um, so I got rid of Scion, uh, and then I go over, and then I start working down um, Vader and Darth Revan. Um, now, I hate the health equalization um, from Darth Revan, so I actually saved Darth Revan. Um, until he has less than 100% health. Uh, and then I can use Malak to do a drain life on him instead. So it's actually, I kind of leave him alone um, until I can do that. So uh, we work him down a little bit. But uh, when I get my drain life up and running, then I just get rid of him in one blow so he doesn't trigger Malak. And then here, I'm actually going to be gunning straight for Malak instead of Nihilus. Now remember, every time um, that a, uh, that a, a Sith ally is defeated, it's boosting the stats um, of the other Sith. And so it actually gets really obnoxious um, to get through a Malak at that point when he has those boosted stats. So I leave Nihilus over there just stunned doing nothing and then actually go for Malak first. Um, so we're going to get rid of Malak. Um, I did use the Drain Life there um, on purpose so I could get to my three stacks. Um, so I'd on the basic... Uh, with uh, with Malak, I'm inflicting heal immunity as well. So I did do that on purpose. You want to get to those three stacks uh, to make sure you're hitting a heal immunity just in case you need it on uh, on Malak. So he's not boosting up his health if he gets a drain life off. So we'll get rid of Malak. I'm kind of slowly whittling down Nihilus at the same time with some of those AOEs. But again, I don't want to kill. Uh, I don't want to kill Nihilus first uh, because I I want to uh, deal with Malak first and then. We get rid of Malak, and then I'll just go over there and get rid of Darth Nihilus. So, uh, rather easily handled. Nobody died, um, and, and and pretty manageable. And then, uh, there you go. Done and done. All right, you guys. So, I hope that helped you out. If you use a different team composition, please let us know down below. That way, if somebody doesn't have one of these teams that I mentioned, they might have yours. Um, I did do some testing with uh, Jedi Knight Luke as well. That lead works just fine against this um, event as well. And then, of course, if you got your Galactic Legends and whatnot, you're going to be okay. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining me once again here on the grid. You guys, I'll catch you in the next video. And until then, we're going off the grid.